To perform a passive myofascial release technique to the psoas muscle, we can bring our patient's hip and knee into flexion. We locate the ASIS and we're traveling towards the spine. So we're going in a medial and posterior direction. When we get to the level of the psoas, again, we can confirm that we're on it by having our patient lift their knee up into our elbow and relax. So we've located that psoas muscle. Now we want to lift up their leg, bring them into hip flexion. And we're sinking into that muscle and creating a slight superior drag. So dragging that superficial fascia. We then slowly lower that leg down into hip extension, looking for any resistance throughout that movement. We then reduce our pressure slightly as we lift that leg back up into hip flexion. As the patient breathes out, we sink back in and moving again into hip extension. So this would be a passive myofascial release technique for the psoas. We can complete that same technique to the iliacus by identifying that ASIS hooking over the iliac crest in towards that iliac fossa. Once we're on the muscle, we can then create that superficial drag of the fascia by gliding up around that iliac crest. This can be quite a sensitive technique. So again, we're gripping underneath the patient's calf, lifting that up and then creating that superficial fascial drag as we lower that leg down into hip extension. Nice and slow with this technique. We don't want to force through it. Sinking in and slowly lowering down into hip extension. To perform this technique actively, we can maintain our block on that muscle and the superficial fascia, but then we ask our patient to slowly lower that leg down into extension. So slide your foot along the towel, stop if you feel any resistance or pain. And then we slowly remove some of our pressure, not all the way, bring that leg back up into hip flexion. We reset our technique, so we sink back into the muscle, create that superficial glide of the fascia, and then straightening that leg back down. So we can repeat this technique until we get a good change in tone uh, underneath our fingers and a good reduction in pain. Then we can go back to our reassessment to see if that's made any change to hip extension.